a montage of newborn puppies, older puppies playing, future guide dogs in training, and guide dogs around the community with their handlers. They change destinies. Ready to go? And make the impossible real. Find the physio. For people with low vision or blindness. Good boy. They're the constant companions who transform lives. Very nice. This is the story of one of Australia's most trusted charities. Yep. Quentin, you're ready to go, buddy. And the dedicated animals they nurture for a vital role. Good boy, Elmo. Welcome to the extraordinary world of guide dogs. The Born to Lead logo appears. On this episode... The puppies keep coming. We follow the guide dog journey from birth... OK, in we go. Find the escalator. All the way through to retirement. I sort of thought, well, if I keep her, will I be able to focus and love another dog? In Victoria, we join Opal at the guide dog's nursery as she delivers her litter following an x-ray checkup with vet Anne and Kara Janice inside a vet clinic. In Melbourne, Opal is heavily pregnant and Janice is bringing her in for a checkup with vet Anne. Go on in here, dog. Vet Anne speaks. Yeah. Sometimes these labours, when she actually delivers the pups, take a long time. And so to have to know how long gives us an idea on decision making about whether she needs to go to a caesarean or whether we're going to try and get them all out naturally. Be careful. She's looking really good. She's in good body weight. The precious mums-to-be are given full health checks to make sure everything goes smoothly for the birth. You've got to get an x-ray, Opes. How many, hey? How many, Dal? We'll see. Yeah. All right, there we got it. That's the scum. X-ray of Opal's pregnant tummy. One, two, three, three four, five, six, six seven. seven. Do you reckon I that's think that's one there. Eight, and that backbone coming down. Opal is carrying a big litter and everyone is on high alert. Janice speaks. We're looking and going, okay, there's eight to nine pups that we've got to try and get out and the effect that that's going to have on mum and obviously from a team perspective too because it means that we're here through the night. It's a little bit apprehensive, but this kind of thing still gives me goosebumps because I know that we're bringing new pups into the world and again, you know, Opal, it's a really vulnerable time for her giving birth and she's allowing us to be there and be part of that process. So that's something that I take for the rest of my life. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's an experience that we're really lucky to be able to have. We follow Brooke in New South Wales through the Home Whelping Program with the Help Home Whelping Advisor Leah and volunteer Lani. That experience is about to begin again for Leah in New South Wales, as Brooke's big day or night has arrived. Lani called me at 10.30 and said that Brooke's contractions have started, so I've just arrived and we're just now waiting for the first puppy to arrive. Every whelp I go to is different, so I am a little bit anxious in the lead up to it. So sometimes they might be really long. They might have a big litter and it might last for quite a few hours, or it might be a quick litter, or she might have to go for a caesarean. So they're, they're all so different. A first puppy is born. Brooke's puppies are starting to arrive now. Well done, Brooke. So we're finishing cleaning off one and another one's arriving. First born girl. Lani speaks. Really exciting and interesting to watch. A um, little bit nerve wracking, so obviously uh, um, hoping that everything goes well and there are no issues. Shots of Brooke and her yellow and black puppies being born, sleeping and feeding. It's early hours of the morning and we have an adrenaline rush, so we're not really tired at this stage because the puppies keep coming, so we're busy marking them and checking them and making sure that they're, they're all a healthy weight. She's very cute. I've been in this role for five years nearly now and I've delivered probably about 400 to 450 puppies so each one is special, they're all, all equally special and all equally different. So it's very exciting. So Brooke's puppies have all arrived and they're all healthy and doing really well. Brooke's feeding them. There you go Brooke, and have your puppy. Superstar Brooke has delivered seven perfect puppies and Lani is overjoyed but realistic about the job ahead, helping to care for this very precious litter. 
I feel like I've just got that whole extra layer of um, responsibility around keeping them well and keeping them healthy and you know they're going to go on to be guide dogs someday so I feel like I really need to do everything I can to try to keep them as well and healthy as I can and Brooke. <laughs> Close up of the puppy sleeping and cuddling with closed eyes. We then follow Puppy Reed home with his new puppy raiser, Michelle. A yellow puppy is fitted with his first training jacket and carried to a car. This is Puppy Reed heading home with Michelle. Let's go. Slightly addicted myself to puppy raising, but love puppy raising, love to be able to give back to the community in every way that we can do that. Michelle carries Reed into her home. Michelle's dedication is incredible. She's raised an astonishing 16 puppies in the last 10 years. Okay, in we go. In we go, look. Look, there's a cat. A black cat sits on the couch. It is a crazy amount of puppies. Yes, lots of toileting. <laughs> We're gonna go in here, come see a new house and your new room. Puppy Reed explores his new home and meets pet Every cats. Every dog is so different, so it doesn't get old. There we go. Really exciting to meet another one, see what they're going to be like and find out the, the little personality this little puppy's going to have. <laughs> it's a case of helping him to settle in. Because of all the support, the pressure isn't as much as you would think it necessarily is, but it's more of the pressure you put on yourself to get it right and to do the right thing by the dog and to make sure that it's going to make it and get into assessment and obviously go on to be a guide, fingers crossed at the end. The hard part of giving them back is definitely outweighed by all the positives of everything that we do in puppy raising. Puppy Reed sleeps in his crate. The following shows puppy raiser Nancy and puppy development advisor Alex talking while walking and seated at a garden table with yellow Labrador Luca. Scenes include Luca being walked in his orange guide dog in training coat, playing and being patted. A giant guide dog statue appears, outdoor scenes at the guide dog headquarters. It's all quiet now, but the first week of school is about to start at the guide dog headquarters around the country. And that means some tough goodbyes. So some extra cuddles? I think so. For the families like Nancy's who've given okay. so much love to the guide dog's puppies, development advisor Alex is on hand to help with the heartbreaking task of saying goodbye. This way. Well, oh, good boy. Nancy speaks. Well, it was the first time we'd ever had a dog to begin with, so it was a big shock for the whole family as to how to raise this little thing. Luca, stand. Good boy. Luca spent the last year living with Nancy and her family in Victoria. And saying goodbye to their big, beautiful, fair-haired boy is going to be especially hard. Our girls are desperate for a dog and we were not prepared to take the plunge. And so they put together a plan as to how to get a puppy. And <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> sneaky. And our eldest daughter researched and found guide dogs and just said, look, Mum, we can raise one for 12 months and see what we like, see what we don't like, and we can change someone's life. Good boy, well done. How's he going with his leading out? He's doing much better. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can he's see him like sort of, really well. Good he boy. still likes to sniff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're learning. How did you deal with the pressures of, of looking after a dog that belongs to guide dogs? We had several discussions about this before taking Luca on. We always reminded ourselves that his purpose was a greater purpose than just being our pet. Well done. Good boy, Luca. The challenges are preparing ourselves to not have him. That's the most challenging part, but we know that he's going to someone who's, who needs him and who will love him as much, if not more, than we do. Tomorrow being Luca's last day with us, I think we're just going to spend time with him. I think we're just going to take him to his favourite park and just enjoy him being him. Beautiful boy. Yellow and black Labradors being walked into the kennels. After their final goodbyes, it's time for the new dogs, including Horace and Susan. Good girl, Susan. To head inside, check out their new home. Good girl 
and meet their new bunk mates. Oh, good girl. Okay. Oh, yay. Oh, nice. There's a team of volunteers on hand to keep the dogs company whilst they get used to all the different sights and smells. On your bed. Good girl. Good job. Good job, Harris. <laughs> We join future guide dogs out and about in Sydney during their training. They face distractions like traffic, pedestrians and other animals. Chelsea arrives at a puppy raiser's home. In Sydney, guide dog trainer Chelsea is up and out early to start the day schooling. A day in the life of a guide dog trainer involves picking up our dogs and taking them out to different training locations. Yellow Labrador Winnie Good greets morning. Chelsea. Good girl. Today we're going to go and pick up Winnie and Eric. All right, see you later, guys. Bye. Come on, Winnie. Chelsea takes Winnie to the car. Our home boarders are amazing volunteers who look after our dogs while they're still in their training. So instead of the dogs living at the guide dog centre during the whole period of their training, we place them into volunteers' homes so they can live with families and hang out with them on the weekends and in the evenings. Good morning, dogs. Sit. At another home, Good. Chelsea collects Black Labrador Eric. Our dogs get to spend more time with people, people get to spend more time with dogs, and we place our dogs with them, pick them up and take them out and train them each day, and our volunteers get to enjoy them the rest of the time. Straight on. Chelsea and Winnie train in harness at a train station. Forward. Good girl, straight on. The first class for Winnie today Find the escalator. is a train station. Find the escalator. It's definitely a lot of teamwork involved in guide dog mobility because they're not a GPS. They board an escalator. Good, good girl. On you get. They can't read our minds, they don't know where we want them to go. So it's a matter of us working with the dog and the dog working with us for us to be able to get to where we want to go. Off. Every dog is completely different. It's one of the things that I love most about my job is learning about the individual dog that's in front of me. Find the right, find the doors. So every dog's training will be different as well. Winnie, forward. They bought a train. Good girl, find a seat. And find a seat. Winnie is a lot of fun. Good girl. From the moment I met her, I called dibs on her. I said, this is my dog and sorry to my training partner, but I want to train this dog. Win. I had to pick the seat next to the sandwich. Hey? Winnie is super alert, especially when a neighbour unwraps a tempting sandwich. Today, Winnie's keen senses will be bombarded with many more distractions. Good girl. Many of us navigate the busy sights and sounds of the city and suburbs every day without even thinking about them. It's important that Winnie can help her future handler do the same. Find the crossing. Good girl, straight on. Busy traffic and inner city scenes. Focus is all important for guide dogs. And having been star pupil out on the street, it's time to put Winnie's concentration to the ultimate test. So we're taking Winnie to a local pet stock. It's a great place to proof known behaviours. Left. So Winnie is coming to the end of the training. She knows what to do. So we're going to increase the level of distraction around her. Find left. Winnie leads her handler past aisles of dog toys. Good girl. The trainers are looking for the tiniest and most subtle signs. A head turn here, a pause there. Winnie, right. Good girl. But tell them what the dog needs to work on. Steady. Find right. The stall cat, Katie, blocks right. Winnie's path. Katie appears completely unfazed, but Winnie's a little uncertain. Forward. Winnie. Yes. Good girl. This is a great example of why the dogs are exposed to as many situations as possible during their training to find out what they need to work on and make sure there are no surprises when dogs like Winnie go on to their handler. Good girl. Guide dog Purdy meets her handler Nikki for the first time and we follow their first weeks of bonding and training together to find out if they're a match. Purdy steps into a car footwell. 
I've been dreaming about her. I'm just thinking, what do I buy her? I just can't wait. Super excited. Eamon and Purdy arrive at Nikki's home. Yeah. I always feel a little bit nervous on the first day of a program, just, just because the person is always a little bit anxious as well about making sure it's going to go OK. They walk into Nikki's yard to meet. Is it? Hello! <laughs> Hi! It's hard to tell who's the most excited. Hi, darling! But Nikki is about to get an early lesson in being a guide dog handler. See if she needs to do a quick wee. Do you want to do that? I don't know how to do that I'll with them. I'll tell you how to do that. <laughs> Ready? Come on. Girl. Good girl. And what I want you to do is just walk her around in a bit of a circle, like sort of move her in a circle. Come on, darling. Just say quick quicks. Quick quicks. Quick quicks. Over the next three weeks, Eamon will be helping Nikki to build her confidence with Purdy, so she can navigate the everyday world Purdy. she lost along with her sight. Oh, thank you. You're very kissy. Nikki lost her vision suddenly seven years ago. We're getting ready for your first walk here. So I'm going to be talking a lot about positioning. So um, Nikki's vision loss really has meant she can no longer go out and about with complete confidence. So Eamon's role is to make sure Nikki learns the correct commands and helping them as a team to navigate the busy outside world. Get you to pick up your handle there, just mm -hmm. like we had shown you before. It should be um, just sort of loosely sitting in your knuckles there. It's not as simple as just picking up the handle and saying go. There's a lot that you have to do in order to convey what you want from the dog. We've got three main positions that I need to teach you. For their own safety, the new duo won't be allowed out into the world on their own until Eamon is happy that they're the perfect team. And I want you to take your right foot one step back. This means that starting now, every lesson is critical. I want you to give her her first command, which is going to be the word forward. Ready, forward. Good, and following her along. It's kind of like a, you know, navigator and a pilot sort of situation where the two need to be working together. It's not just the dog basically being a GPS system and, and going on its way. Is that right? That's great. I think I'll speed up eventually. Yeah, of course. So I can tell Nikki's a little bit nervous and I think she just wants to get this right. Um, she's waited a long time for this, but she's a natural. Good girl. Excellent, and it's gotta be genuine. So like, just like you did then, put all of your you know, true emotions into it. Our first obstacle's up ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have here is a very typical obstacle in residential areas. Cars across the footpath, mm -hmm. which is not great because it means that, you know, people like yourself have to get around it and, mm -hmm. you know, you may not always detect what the obstacle is in front of you. Mm -hmm. Purdy is trained to take you around these obstacles. Mm -hmm. As she comes up to the obstacle, she will indicate it to you. She'll either stop or she'll start giving you a bit of a push to the right. Once you feel her pulling to the left, just tell her, find the way, find the way around. Find the way, Purdy. They walk around the car. Straighten you up. And great, we've got a lot, quite Good a bit girl. of obstacles up ahead here. Good girl, Take Purdy. Take it nice and slow. Good girl. Purdy and Nikki's bond is clear already. And they're doing fantastic work on their very first walk. Tell her straight on. Purdy, straight on. Beautiful. Go left. Purdy, And home. she already knows where she's going. Good <laughs> girl. Good girl. She knows her home. <laughs> Step through. Beautiful. They arrive home. Support dog Elmo, a yellow Labrador, offers comfort to travellers in a busy Adelaide airport, including young boy Killian and his mum. Handler Justine puts on Elmo's coat as he steps into a car footwell. Come Elmo, time for work. In Adelaide, South Australia, support dog Elmo is getting ready to head to work with handler Justine. Good boy, hey, another day in the office. But Elmo's office is a little different. This is where Elmo works, Adelaide Airport, where he's an important part of the airport's Hidden Disabilities Program. Justine speaks. So our Hidden Disabilities Program is about uh, people that may have a disability that you can't see. So it could be autism, it could be anxiety. <laughs> Elmo's there is more of a comfort dog to calm people down and you know we've seen that in action a few times now and it's uh, been really successful. Elmo meets Killian yeah, Elmo. and his mum Jean. Yeah, you're doing a good job, good well boy. done. Elmo! Hello. Give him a pat. Hello. Say hello. Travelling today are Killian and his mum Jean. <laughs> Elmo says hello to you. Yeah, hello. Killian is autistic yeah. and airports can be a high stress environment for him. Jean speaks. The main challenges for Killian is he's got a whole collection of sensory challenges, auditory challenges. Three 
Do you want to give him a little pat? Oh, beautiful. Whoa. The biggest challenge for Killian is his anxiety. So Elmo is our facility dog and he is here to take you on a nice calming walk through the airport. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good exciting. Good boy. Oh, good boy. That. Would you like to walk with Elmo or would you prefer us just to be close? You can help Elmo through security. Can what you would you like? Just stay with you, I will stay with you. I'm Absolutely. not going anywhere. I'm never going to leave you. All right, good job. Let's go. Slowly and carefully. First we Beautiful. got here. Then we said hello. And now we're going through security. Look at that. The next thing will be... And we're going to turn to the left. The gate, okay? Good boy. Well done. How many people are in this queue? Look at this. Can I tell you another fun fact? Yes, please. We have three special toilets for our assistance dogs like Elmo. Ah. So the fact that places like Adelaide Airport are doing something now to recognise the challenges for families like ours. Good boy. It's just invaluable really. It makes our life so much easier because it's not fun. You can't see his struggles, but they're there. They're there. So it is, it's just wonderful. And it will make a difference, not just for our family, I'm hoping for lots of families. Today, Elmo definitely has made a difference. A simple walk from A to B that's changed a little boy's life. Killian pets Elmo and smiles. We follow Steph and her black guide dog Rocky on their move from Melbourne to the Sunshine Coast. Steph and her husband Rob pack up their high-rise Melbourne apartment while guide dog Rocky relaxes and receives pats. Steph, husband Rob and guide dog Rocky are heading for the Sunshine Coast after years of Melbourne's cooler climate. This will be my first move being completely blind. And it's going to be a huge first for Rocky. I think Rocky probably won't know what's going on at first. His personality does suit an apartment dog. When you're matched with a guide dog, they match you with their temperament and your lifestyle. So Rocky was picked because he is quite a relaxed dog, but I think he'll love having the space. He'll also take his cues from me. Um, yeah, if I'm relaxed, he's relaxed. Yeah, he also knows when I'm stressed and he'll stop and give me a little nudge or a little cuddle or that sort of thing and, and really help me, which is really lovely. People play on a sunny beach. As soon as they're settled in, Guide Dog Mobility Instructor Jason is on hand to help with the family's daunting task of starting their new life in Queensland. Hello. Hi Jason. Hello, how are you? Good, nice lovely. to meet you. Likewise, lovely to meet you. Hello mate. A vital first task for any person with low vision or blindness in a new place Feel my way around, I'm still getting used to navigating the oh, new that's house. Alright. That's alright. Is to learn the routes they need to get around. And that's where Steph and Jason are starting can't expect him to have a Google Maps downloaded in, in his mind. So once you hit the curb, the button's going to be on your left-hand side. Okay. So, you may not... so it's a real 50-50 partnership and you need to build that bond and trust with your dog. They train That's a route it. near a busy road. Okay. Steph and Rocky need to learn specific Daddy? routes for Rocky oh. to navigate. And this first one is getting Steph to an important oh, yeah, Pilates no. class. All right. Hey, hey. Switch on. Switch on. All right, All right let's go ready. forward. Something that I didn't even think about when I was losing my sight was how it would affect my balance. You know yourself, if you close your eyes, your balance isn't as good. So it's important for me to work on my core strength and Pilates does that for me. So to get Rocky That's it, to be able to take me there so I can do it independently and do it regularly is very high up on my list. That's a physio, physio. They oh, enter the physio. Boy. Now it's a case of learning by repetition. Now go to the counter. Find the counter. They repeat the route. Find the physio. Yes. Good boy. Very good. Very good. Good boy. Find the physio, Rocky. Find the counter. There are no shortcuts for guide dogs and their handlers. And this is just one of dozens of routes Steph and Rocky might need to learn. Good boy. Well done. You're a little star. Good boy. Guide dog handler Naomi makes hard decisions around the retirement of her guide dog Maggie. Handler Naomi takes Maggie into a pet stock store for new toys and grooming. 
Naomi speaks. Find the door. On your right. Good girl. In Sydney, guide dog Maggie has shared a long and rewarding partnership with handler Naomi. Here, look, what about this one? I was a cane user from when I was little. I didn't really want a dog because they shed and because I'd never really had one, didn't really know what to do with one. Hey, what about this one? I was working in the city at the time and I actually fell off the platform onto the middle of a train. There were just so many people. I didn't quite know where the door was. So that incident just made me re realize that a cane's great but a dog is greater. I got in touch with guide dogs and then eight years ago got Maggie. <laughs> Do you want this one? We can get you this one. Hi. Lydia. You can have her, yes. <laughs> she gave me back my independence. As I said, you know, a cane's great, but a cane can't find a vacant seat. Say, you know, find the door. And even if she's ever been somewhere before, she will find a door. Maggie has a bath and nails clipped. The second you put the harness on her, she was perfect. And I always say to people, she pretty much only ever had two or three bad days in the eight years. Honestly, she was that good. She was, yeah, perfection. Naomi and Maggie walking. But these days, Maggie's starting to feel her age. Good girl. I took Maggie into the office five days a week in the city and she just didn't seem to be very happy to be there anymore, whereas she used to love going to work. Steady. Good girl. Steady. I guess I felt that her back legs were getting a little bit stiff as well in the colder months. And then she just was walking around, still doing her job, but I could just feel in her body language that she just didn't have the drive anymore. It was like she just wanted to be at home. Now Naomi has to decide what comes next after Maggie stops working. I had told everybody that would listen that that was it, I was done. I didn't want to get another dog because I didn't want to replace Maggie. I had to think about, well, would I keep her, would I not? I didn't want her to feel like, oh, okay, well, my job's done now, mum's got a new dog. Naomi hangs up Maggie's harness. <laughs> guide dogs have volunteers who offer to take retiring guide dogs or I could give her to a friend. I had very strict ideas of, of who I'd leave her with. Um, and at first I thought maybe it would have to be somebody that I don't know because I don't want to have to see her and know that I gave her away. But then at the same time I sort of thought, well, if I keep her, will I be able to focus and love another dog? Maggie plays with Naomi. And along came Winnie. <laughs> and new yellow guard dog Winnie in a park. And Maggie and Winnie loved each other on site. So that sort of made my decision for me. I guess in a sense it's good for Maggie because Maggie has a friend and they love to play together. She seems happy and she's moving a little bit more now because of Winnie, because Winnie wants to play. They play at home with colourful toys. Come on. It's a lot of extra work for me, but it's really sweet to see them both together as well. I'm going to focus on Maggie being a normal dog now. I see, you know, a very happy pair of dogs in the future. I think they're both happy. Maggie and Winnie sleeping. <laughs>